Welcome back everybody, hit that like, hit that subscribe, comment down below, let me know what you think about this video, let me know what you think and your opinions on Jonathan Taylor or what we're going to talk about with Tua. But today we're just going to give a quick little update uh, to what I'm hearing on, it's, it's kind of on the download, but I, I think it's an actual true viable source that it looks like the physical staff or not physical, I guess you could say the medical staff has went to Indianapolis and gave up, is trying to give a physical to Jonathan Taylor. So my last video, I gave a bold prediction that I think Jonathan Taylor will be here by Sunday and I'm, I'm going to back it up. Um, I do believe that, you know, whenever we see Chris Greer trying to go for a player, he usually goes and gets him. You know, and what I'm hearing is that it is going to be a conditional second round pick. So which means that, you know, what depending on how many games he plays or whatever, you know, the, the actual parameters are for that pick, they'll give him a second or it could be something else, you know. So what I'm seeing is that the, the medical staff has gone over there to give the physical. Usually you don't do that unless the talks have really ramped up and, and gotten fire to the flame, basically. Uh, you don't really do that unless you kind of know you can secure that type of player. And what I'm seeing right now is, uh, like I said, you know, when you had Dalvin Cook, we were all wondering, you know, because usually Chris Greer is pretty good about getting the player that he wants. And it was like, uh, you're not really doing much for Dalvin Cook. You're kind of letting it go. And we all thought it was for a different reason than what it actually is, in which what we're starting to see is that it looked like he knew Jonathan Taylor <clears throat> was going to be available. And Jonathan Taylor, I mean... I, you take a 24-year-old over a 28, 29-year-old any day of the week, you know, I mean, Jonathan Taylor is a young, elite back. You know, if he stays on the field, you have one of the best, if not the best, running back in football. That's just a pure fact. So what it looks like is that maybe they were looking to the younger guys because, again, even though we have a window, you know, you, you want to have that young talent on this team to build for the future. Um, and they're doing a good mix of that. So it looks like, like I said, the training staff is over there and they're trying to give a physical to Jonathan Taylor and to see, you know, passes the physical and it, you know, you only do that again, like I said, unless you have an actual proposal written up and that it's, it's a serious one that both sides are looking into it and thinking that that could be the offer. So it is what it is. And like I said, bold prediction Sunday, he's going to be here. You know, you want to get all your players and all your pieces before that cutting because then you know who you need to get you know you don't want to have it outside of Tuesday where you can possibly miss out on players just because you know you didn't have all the players that you needed next to uh, obviously had some comments thrown at him and I just it was just such a stupid situation just pointless you know I mean the guy Ryan Clark I really I never really saw Ryan Clark being the person like when I saw what was going on with who was saying what. I was surprised. I was like, wow, Ryan Clark said that about Tua? That's crazy, man. I mean, he's a very respectable guy. He apologized. But here's what I can see is that, you know, clearly the testosterone and everything in Tua has gone up because that is what a leader does. You know, people wanted him to retort back. I think Rich Eisen wanted him to retort back. You know what is manlier? To not retort back. That's, it, it's childish to sit there and throw insults at each other. He handled it very professionally. And that is what we're starting to see is that Tua is assuming that leadership role where, you know, he takes the brunt of everything. I've never seen a person take so much of the brunt of the criticism from these NFL analysts. And it's just crazy, you know, how he responds. You know, you typically see some of these players where they'll just scream at the reporters or they'll tell the guy to screw off or whatever it is. Tua just politely says, I'll kick your, and that'll be it, you know, like, it's just showing the leadership role of, and, and just being a man, you know, just being a man where you don't need to throw insults, just, just say like it is, you know, I'll whoop you if you want to come, you know where I live, that's it, 
You know what I'm saying? Like we can get scrappy. That's what he said. It's just assuming that leadership role of being a leader on this, not just offense, but this team, you know, like being that guy that they can throw whatever they want at us. We're still going to whoop their at the end of the day. So <laughs> that's just the way it's going to be. You have that person on this team that whatever you guys say, it's just going to come right back at you because this team is solid, elite and together. We are, they are all together. I don't think I've ever seen a team this much bound together by friendship and loyalty. So Tua has become the leader. He has become the leader. And it's clear as day. I don't care what anybody says. And he's going to showcase on the field, like I always say. This year, we got a couple weeks till Tua starts showing what he has. And you know what? It doesn't matter the first week, second week. He's going to show throughout the whole period. He's going to show through the ups and downs that he will be the quarterback that we wanted. He is the leader. He's put on the way. He's done the work. He's going to assume the role. It's just the way it's going to be. Let me know what you think about this, though. Tell me what you think about Tua or what you think about John and Taylor. But as always, hope you have a great rest of your day. Fins up, baby. Peace.